Hi friends, I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde, a Senior Professor at Homi Baba National Institute. Um, this lecture is part of a course on risk-based engineering. And uh, this week's topic is human reliability. And uh, you are watching the fourth lecture on Human Cognitive Reliability Method, HCR method. I will be using uh, the abbreviation HCR henceforth. Um, once, you, uh, once you see this presentation uh, and if you would have followed the previous presentation also, uh, if you practice a little bit here and there um, or take some focus uh, problem on Human Reliability Assessment, you have already become a Human Reliability Engineer. Why? Because these two techniques together, they present most of the aspects of the conventional human reliability approach uh, for especially for uh, risk assessment or uh, if I have to be very specific probabilistic risk assessment. And here I have included one um, a small illustration through a mathematical uh, problem. Um, and let's uh, let's get into all these things. So this we have studied the THERP technique for human error rate prediction technique in previous lecture. This is another technique. It's called human cognitive reliability (HCR) method. So let us see uh, what are the uh, what is human cognitive reliability methodology. So uh, the best way to understand is what is the objective. M here the major focus is what is the time available to us and how much the task will take the time actually. And this gap between the time window that is how much time is available and how much time physically or mentally you will take because it, is, it has got action part also, it has got a cognitive part also. So uh, simple, if the time available is large compared to the time uh, required for the task. Uh, to be comple completed, then the chances of errors are less. It happens in all walk up, walks of our life. A lot of time is there we, we, do, we tend to do less error compared to the uh, situation when we have very limited time, we hurry up, we, we are stressed and we do more mistakes. So there is no, so objective is to uh, have and here the objective is more on cognitive component of uh, risk. Um, here the role of cognition has been modeled. There is a standard mathematical model. There are uh, standard uh, lookup tables. Uh, those gives uh, uh, coefficients for uh, various type of jobs, rule based, skill, uh, skill based. Uh, first is skill based, the rule based, and then knowledge based task. And then other characterization also include what kind of control room is there, what are the modern systems which are there. Um, and how the information is presented to the operator, what are different support systems that are available. So they are called performing shipping factor in conventional term, but here they are called uh, some parameters of the model. Uh, the taxonomy in HAR uses performance shipping factor and le level of cognitive processing, you know. Uh, so uh, uh, instead of error, the cognitive uh, HCR uh, it is called uh, probability of non-performance. That means a target had some objective and it was not performed in available time. So no probability of non-performance is the key in uh, parameter that we generate in cognitive reliability. The broad procedure if I have to say um, collect the plant data, understand the problem, estimate the median time how much time uh, has been projected, modify using applicable PSF because what that time has come in a nominal stress or nominal uh, parameters. So we have to apply different modifying factors and then determine the task category whether it is a rule based, skill based, knowledge based and estimate the non-performance as I had mentioned in cognitive uh, HCR uh, it is not called probability of failure. Uh, it is a new convention that has been developed, but it is meant, uh, meaning is same, that uh, probability of failure or non-performance probability. 
So now uh, SCR is sometimes known by its uh, curve that we have here where we have for every uh, task rule based, knowledge based and uh, skill based um, these three different curves are there and what we estimate is here is non-response probability and these are the normalized median time. Normalized median time means um, how much time uh, you will take to perform the task actually. Okay? You know, based on whatever inputs we get, we perform this analysis. And these are called basically HCR correlation. And these curves are what they model, uh, uh, they rule the HCR and they are very important and relevant for HCR, this thing. So uh, from this slide, we have to learn this uh, T median time, T half time. Um, median time is a term normally we use for log normal distribution. So here uh, we have uh, sort of Bible type of distribution. So that can be, I mean, uh, other aspect is it can be characterized by a beta factor in, um, because the character of the HCR model is uh, Bible distribution. Actually. Okay. So, um, how, what is the mathematics and which is uh, at the center of this uh, HCR model? So, basically, it is an assumption of three parameter viable distribution. What is the advantage? Viable distribution uh, can accommodate any data, and whether that data is following exponential distribution, then beta will be 1. If it is a normal distribution, beta is a 3 for a 4. Similarly, for log normal there will be some data. So it is a sometimes it is called universal distribution also and here it is three parameter viable distribution. Okay. So, so what are the parameter? So uh, as we said here this is the probability of non-performance okay. um, and what we have is exponential minus t that is actual time that we consider and divided by t, uh, t so it is called uh, t normalized median time. Then we have AI, BI, CI. These are basically um, depending on the nature of the task, skill based, rule based, knowledge based. 0.407 AI, BI. If it is a skill based task, 0.407 AI, BI is 0.7, CI is 1.2. Similarly, for rule based and knowledge based tasks, those values will come here. So once these three values are coming here, what we need is t median time and small t is the actual time which is taken. So uh, we are able to estimate the non-performance probability is the non-response non probability for a given system. Okay? Um, having done this calculation and supported by this table, we come to, uh, because we have used the t median time here. How to estimate the t median time? t median time is nothing but what t half we have, we have got from the plant data and then uh, modifying by this factor uh, factors k1, k2 and k3. So this is the t median time formula or input that goes into the model. So here uh, we have this and k1, k2 and k3 these are called together k factors and these values uh, we get from you can see here K1, K2, K3 and all. So uh, one is for K1 is for crew. What is the experience level of the person who is at the site who is doing the job? Now expert, well-trained person, well-trained, no wise. Three uh, questions or uh, answers are there uh, regarding his experience. If it is a well-trained person, so there is a nominal value 0.00. .00. Uh, if is expert minus 0.22. Now, now as, as I said, we use it like a black box uh, approach. So of course, little mathematics is required to understand that. But a person who is doing the, uh, for him ready made this table, table and parameters are available. Now, what we mean by expert well trained, at least he has got five years of experience. That qualification also has been done. License with more than six months of experience is well trained and novice is less than six month experience. This is the qualification we have done here. Same thing for stress level. Uh, if it is a grave emergency condition, 0.44 is the factor. High stress of emergency, how you do know that? 
when a transient comes in the plant and that transient um, uh, is require a very immediate action. So the stress level factor, grave emergency, high workload potential, optimal and vigilance problem, low stress stress. So just you have to see what is happening around and time is uh, available. So uh, we use one of the factors in our table for K1 modifying factor we can call. So one factor will come from here, one factor and uh, K1 plus 1, uh, K2 plus 1, K3 plus 1 multiply and then uh, totally it is modified for the plant uh, median time. And uh, of course we will see one exercise here so we will better appreciate this. Control room, uh, what kind of control room we have excellent. Advance uh, and the factor is 0.22. Advanced operating aid available to assist operator in excellent situation. Okay, and, and then good that means reasonably good or good is displays are carefully integrated. In fact, most of the control room they fall in this category, category because even today, operator advisory system or especially intelligent operator advisory system are not part of all the uh, nuclear power plants or nuclear plants. Then fair and poor and all that. And then this vector is extremely poor is point through the, that in, in a way it shows probability and all. Displays are needed to alert operator at this, this time. Ha, now understood K1, K2, K, K3. Uh, okay, before I take the problem, let us see uh, what is operator, operator action T, uh, tree um, in HRA. This is very useful uh, uh, gra uh, graphical uh, technique uh, where we have some event has occurred. So its detection is the next event in the chronological order. Once we detect it, diagnosis uh, is the next step, then action and recovery. If suppose some deviation is there, then recovery is required. So the, we have six states. So you can say in human reliability, most of the components have been uh, um, put here in the inventory. And then like our faulty or inventory, the sequences are there, it's only a sequence here. So all the successes are there, nothing, no, nothing to worry. Here uh, one recovery uh, uh, recovered uh, and then it has been success. So that, here also there is no problem. Um, no action was taken because, um, because here we have this detection is there, diagnosis is there, but action was not taken. So no action was taken after having understood and all. So uh, this is one situation. And then finally, if diagnosis itself is not successful, then some recovery provisions are there in the plant. If you do that, recovered and success. Again, this falls under the category. So three events, excellent sequences are falling under the uh, success category. And then misdiagnosis. Di uh, recovery uh, was not there proper. Uh, diagnosis was not proper. So misdiagnosis and consequences were, uh, recovery was not pro proper actually. And finally, if detection itself is missing, then there will be any, uh, there will be no response. So three success here. We, here we have one, two, three, and uh, but then at the same time three misdiagnoses uh, are, are also there. Actually. So this is a very systematic way of analyzing. And then if we have probability of these events, which will generate from any uh, human reliability technology, THERP, HCR, and all, and then you can assign it here, and you will have a complete accident. Uh, human action uh, uh, treatment to the subject. Now let us take one simple example uh, and this, the, this I am calling case study because it uh, in uh, whatever salient features of ACR they are all addressed over here. Let us say the problem is like this, uh, safety injection is required at this point. Now let us uh, leave it what is the situation. but we require injection of water at this point so that the our main system is safe which I have not shown here because that is not the subject of this system. And there are primary option is a engineered safety feature has been provided. So 99% of the time this system will come valve V1 will open uh, automatically from control room and then injection will occur. But 1 in 100 or 1 in 1000 probability if this system does not work, then there is a provision of directly injecting water from some tank and there the action will require is opening up wall V2 and closing up this, isolating this system because otherwise water will find its path here. 
so this has to be closed so that water uh, jet is directed at this point so having understood the problem and problem definition that's why i was telling you definition of the problem should be, should be very crisp and uh, that comes from experience only so now once we have done the definition of the problem we have done then here i am uh, doing a small change in this human reliability analysis i am considering components failure probability also because that will give a complete answer you know so if it, these walls were to be opened from control room then assume that failure probability for wall v1 was 2 into 10 to the power -4 per demand and wall v2 6 into 10 to the power -4 because why why wall v2 v2 is rarely operated so uh, rarely operated means whatever test maintenance data are there there that is the only thing but then this system is available it has to be periodically tested so a lot of data will be available so and its uh, workability also will be better that's why these two and so what we get here is total total hardware so, this is a series system i have to do this and this then only i get success so Uh, this wall total failure probability is 10 to the power minus 4 i got so i got hardware component also into my system now operator action needed for closing of wall v1 before i inject this water i have to close this wall to avoid the short circuiting of this water into the uh, system back again and so these two actions are so total non performance probability Uh, if i see ki closing of the wall has similar 1 to 10 to the minus 3 then two walls we have to operate from control room and uh, 1.2 to 10 to the minus 2 is the human performance that we have evaluated hardware is one human performance 10 to the minus 2 you can see here in emergency the often it is seen that human probability is the dominant factor now we know that our time window was available 15 minutes time it takes median time whatever time window available based on that we got this uh, this figure actually now uh, let us let us go uh, and estimate the human error probability now uh, we have got this as we know we discussed in the previous slide uh, we have k1 k2 k3 stress level and uh, we assume uh, this job initially uh, to be uh, knowledge based type let us say with the knowledge based we will do the calculation knowledge based means there will be some um, factor which will be coming in uh, from the our lookup table that we had we have shown earlier so now updating of the k factor uh, for the median time median time was 15 minutes that is plant data and all and we with these factors we modify this so it becomes 16.9 minutes and this becomes the input for our um, model ai bi ci the moment uh, it is a emergency scenario okay and so uh, knowledge based procedures we we are using it here so with this this uh, ai bi ci will come k factor is already there and for this situation we got the non performance probability is 0.23 considering knowledge based task knowledge based task you know because diagnosis is involved so it diagnosis falls under the category of knowledge based task just for the argument sake if we consider this as a rule based task you know so the probability value will come down so we got the sensitivity of uh, these parameters and how the results they vary so we got 0.16 you know uh, but with this calculation itself now uh, when we estimate the probability human action uh, component was 10 to the minus 2 hardware failure probability we got 10 to the minus 4 and then these three hardware cognitive part and action part so we get total because this become the dominating factor so the one should, something should be done to reduce this factor and uh, otherwise it is 0.25 so this a small problem simple problem uh, demonstrates how hcr methodology and i think with this you are trained in using hcr method uh, don't you think it is a big achievement one lecture and it is uh, explaining you how to use this methodology actually now let us review therp and hcr strength and limitation okay so uh, what we have here is uh, that you know let's say first uh, therp because we are working on developing a new methodology so let us see therp therp so biggest advantage is very comprehensive elegant 
and supported by lot of data and performance shaping factors. There is a consideration of the biggest advantage as we can see from here is that it has got a human model which is not there in many of the approaches. And third, which is the winning, uh, winning uh, thing, uh, aspect which goes in the favor of therapies, there is a complete handbook available in public domain. Uh, if you, you can download this handbook. So that means we got a uh, complete handbook with you. It is a popular uh, approach and it is extension of, uh, it, it can accommodate skill, rule and knowledge based uh, thing because it was extension of WASH 1400. So these are all the advantages that we have seen. Um, but uh, limitation if we see, the component model is not a fundamental model and uh, uh, there is a scope for improving this model uh, for processing and all. So, uh, so that is one thing. And then uh, the experience suggests that the uncertainty evaluation uh, is, a, is a conservative approach that we and probably uh, the, this is an era where we need a very optimum solution. So conservative factors are uh, being uh, addressed through optimum solution approach. Uh, the source of data is more or less uh, non-nuclear, nuclear, uh, expert elicitation and to some extent operating experience is also there. Um, but we don't know the background. We only see the factors actually. So uh, it becomes a black box approach. It becomes a black box approach and uh, still we cannot use this approach for security scenario because uh, we don't have a security related aspects over here and then uh, it is meant for control room. Essentially it is meant for control room uh, and cognitive mod modeling and it has got a rule based, uh, uh, skill based and a knowledge based structure incorporated into the system. So this is some sort of advanced. Um, uh, limitation in the sense that uh, whether whatever data we, we are using, we, how far they are applicable to my, uh, so that we have to be very careful on this. Now if I talk about the strength of HCR, it is, it is basically targeted to cognitive component modeling and of course action component is also there, but cognitive component is the, we, have, we look at the model uh, cognitive curve then cognitive uh, mathematical model, then uh, performance shaping factor, then K factor, that is modifying factors. So it is ready for cognitive modeling. Uh, limitation is no fundamental human model is available. The lookup table coefficient and all they back up and again it comes in the category of a uh, sort of black box type of approach. Uh, but since it is used very actively uh, and it gives reasonable results, um, yeah, but the, we have to live with these limitations and lack of modeling of security cell. It doesn't talk about the intended failure, it, it talks about the random failure, you know. So that way it has got limited. So final, uh, we'll say that THERP and SCR are the two uh, major approaches designed specifically for PRA. If you have learned how to use THERP and SCR, you have become a human reliability engineer. The model appears to provide highly conservative results. So okay, so we can afford that. It should not be very optimistic. That is the danger, uh, not desired actually. The human model design, uh, keeping in view the PRA, probabilistic risk assessment requirement. But um, tasks are there part of any uh, complex modeling, whether it is industrial se sector, whether it is aviation, whether it, so these techniques, though they have been used, designed for uh, PRA, it can be adopted very easily for uh, individual task in any complex system or any system where the human factor has been uh, an issue uh, and there some solution is required. Um, so uh, these models they start with the fundamental attributes of human required because you know some fundamental knowledge is required but it start with some lookup table so we have to cross uh, keep our finger crossed actually. Higher uncertainty appears to be due to most of the data comes from uh, from expert elicitation simulator data. Simulator, simulator is a model of the plant, it is not a model. So uh, the, the research need is at this point of time is to develop the correlation coefficient uh, for data which has been generated on a simulator so that it can be reflected back into the field and into the control room situation. And that is not an easy task 
which is again a subject of R&D. So otherwise, what we do in simulator may or may not be applicable because stress levels we cannot simulate. So there should be some factor which should be modified to reflect control room condition. So with this remark, uh, I close uh, this uh, fourth talk of uh, on human reliability um, and next we will be discussing the whatever lessons we have learned so far. We will be uh, trying to see how cognitive CQB model uh, has got a promising uh, future. Thank you very much.